This video will introduce the core concepts that RayDK is based on. We're going to start with ray marching. So you don't need to know all the details about how ray marching works in order to use the toolkit, which is kind of the point, but it is still useful to have a general understanding of it when learning how to use the toolkit. I'll be using some example components created by Tim Garitza uh, for a tutorial that is available on the Touch Designer Study Weekend Patreon. I highly recommend subscribing to their Patreon and watching that tutorial series. Um, it goes into a lot of detail about how ray marching works and how the code um, accomplishes that. And it goes into a lot more detail than we're going to be covering here. Now, ray marching simulates rays of light going backwards from the camera into the scene instead of going from the scene into the camera, but essentially the logic is the same. So each pixel of the rendering casts a ray out into the scene, and the shader marches along that ray, stopping at points along the way until it hits a surface. So here we've got our camera. You can kind of view this as like a top-down view of the screen. So each point on there is a pixel and we've got this ray coming out of it and going in some direction. Now it takes a step, it checks to see whether it has hit anything. If it hasn't, it takes another step and so on and so on until it eventually hits a surface and then it decides what color that should be based on where the light is and the properties of that surface and so on and that's what color the pixel ends up being so the main thing to take away from this section is that the ray marching process is based around focusing on points in space and examining the scene at each point in space and to see when it's hit the surface So going back to Ray TK, the role of ROPs in the scene can be summarized as ROPs answer various types of questions about points in space. If you're familiar with a traditional text-based programming language or with math in general, um, you can think of a ROP as a function that takes in a parameter, P, for position and returns some sort of value. In fact, that's what's inside each op is just a function like that in GLSL. Output ops or renderers like Raymarch Render 3D ask the ROPs questions about points in space along the path of the ray that it casts through the scene. There are a variety of different types of questions that ROPs can be asked. Different ROPs support different kinds of questions and different kinds of answers. You can think of the process as a discussion. The shader, or the, in the renderer, asks the, the ROP, hey ROP, what's the nearest thing to this point? The ROP sa responds and says, it's a sphere, but it's pretty far away. Then the shader moves its point along that ray, and then it asks about another point. It says, okay, well, it's the closest thing to this point that's further along the ray. And the ROP says, you know, it's a sphere and it's so close that it's basically hitting the surface. And the ROP says, thank you, and goes off and decides what color it should be. So as mentioned previously, output ops or renderers take in one or more ROPs, generate a shader, and run it in a GLSL top to produce some outputs. Nearly all of the actual work done to render a scene happens inside the output op at the end of the scene network. The network of ROPs that connect into the renderer produce definitions that specify how they behave and the parameters that the output op gathers to use in the shader. Most of the time, there is basically no work going on in most ROPs, except when you change certain types of settings on them. The main output operator or renderer that 
we've been discussing in these tutorials has been Raymarch Render 3D. But there are also other ones such as Render 2D, Point Map Render, or Function Graph Render. So that is the basic concept behind how Raymarching works in Ray2K. In upcoming videos, we'll talk about different types of operators and how they work in scenes.